Rumble Blue? Well, cheer up then. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Sonny, you kissed my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! It's Studio Series 1986 movie core class Rumble Blue. Rumble is the street punk deployable cassette minion of Soundwave, whose arms turned into pile drivers which he used to make earthquakes. Don't ask me how that works. But he did actually have several lines in the 1986 movie, and even lugged around Megatron's fusion cannon after the fight with Optimus Prime. Check out the box, and even as small as the box is, Little Rumble still looks like he's got plenty of room in there. There's character art on the side panel. Modes and features listed on the back. Angry face close up on the other side. Now let's get Rumble out of his box and see how blue he really is. <laughs> out of box Studio Series 86 Blue Rumble comes with his instruction leaflet. Two matching wingeding weapon accessories with core weapon sized pegs at the bottom and two matching pile driver accessories. And this is Rumble in his alt mode, and there's no real reason to lionize it all that much. It's one of Soundwave's deployable cassettes meant to store in the chestal area, and it does indeed do that thing. Though as with most of the MicroMaster sized cassettes, it's a really tight fit. So much so that the button won't open the hatch anymore. You'll have to pry it open. As to the cassette itself, it's a rectangle. What more can you say, really? It's blue with some lighter blue bits, and some silver highlighting. The sculpt work is good, and they included the circuitry patterns from Generation 1, the cassette gears, with tamp decals simulating the cassette labeling. There are four ports on the cassettes where you can store the miniguns, but there's nothing you can do with the pile drivers but leave them lying loose. Though the pile drivers do have an open port on them so that you can store the gun in them as well. Each pile driver also has an open 5mm port on the top so that you can plug guns into that. For... reasons. The guns are a flat grey plastic, thankfully not soft rubber, and the pile drivers match the colors on the cassette. And they were a nice addition, but they are hollowed out like a Halloween pumpkin. Sadly, the pile drivers have no actual piston functionality. But they did accessorize and give you the ability to doll him up Generation 1 cartoon style, which was nice. Transforming Studio Series Rumble is fairly simple. The robot legs tab into the sides and underneath the arms just here. Untab and pull them loose and fold the leg joints down. Do it for both sides, turn them around so that the circuitry is pointed forward, then rotate the legs at the knee joint so that the shins are pointing forward as well. Fold out the feet from the front of the shins. Each arm folds inward at the shoulders to cover the head. Just ease the arm joints off into the side and rotate them down. Flip the robot hands out from inside the forearms. Then behind the robot, the head is tucked away at the back. Fold it out and up and give it a 180 degree rotation. Rumble is core sized, very comparable to the Siege MicroMaster cassettes, which makes sense because he had to fit into Soundwave. He is smaller than other core figures, but as usual, to try to make up for the deficiency, Hasbro tossed in some El Cheapo accessories, namely the gun wingadings and the oddly hollowed out pile drivers, but they did put in a lot of the detail that a Generation 1 purist would look for. Even the head is nicely painted if you happen to have a magnifying glass that allows for proper inspection. There's some hollowness at the backs of the shins, and at the front of the shins where the feet fold up, and this gaping hole on the back where you fold in the head. He's light, but he has a solid feel to him, and all the joints feel nice and tight. To attach the pile drivers, fold the arms outwards into the side, making sure that this hinge is flush up against the shoulders, fold the hands back in, then use the ball socket to rotate each arm forward, and this larger hole inside each pile driver is meant to plug into the arm. He does stand fairly well even like this, though his pile drivers won't reach the ground, but you can squat him down low enough for the pile drivers to make contact and give him more stability. He definitely looks more Generation 1 than the Siege MicroMaster robot cassettes, and is just a smidgen taller as well. 
Rumble's articulation comes mostly in the form of ball sockets. One for the head, which will tilt forwards and backwards as part of the transformation, and also do a full rotation. Each shoulder is ball socketed and also hinged, so the arms will spin 360 degrees and splay outwards, and you can even square up the shoulders using the hinges as well. Sadly, there is no elbow articulation, but the Siege Micromaster cassettes didn't have elbows either. Each hand will fold in and out as part of the transformation. There is no waist articulation, but each leg will kick forwards about this far, backwards about this far. They will also splay outwards on a hinge. Each knee is very tightly ball socketed, so the shins will spin 360 degrees. The knees won't bend forward, but they will bend backwards and hinge in all the way. There's no ankle pivot, but each foot will tilt up and down as part of the transformation as well. So you do get some decent articulation out of Rumble, given the size. <laughs> For size comparison, here is Studio Series 86 Core Class Rumble Blue, next to one of the Siege Select MicroMaster cassettes. The name escapes me. Here is Studio Series Core Rumble Blue, next to Masterpiece Rumble. And here is Studio Series 86 Core Blue Rumble, next to Netflix Voyager Soundwave. <laughs> this item has been highly sought after. Hey, they fooled me, right? And those who missed out on the Earthrise Rumble Ratbat pack, and there were a lot of you, may want to go through the effort of tracking this one down, because it fills in the gaping hole in Soundwave's cassette roster. Positives are that Rumble's alt mode fits into Siege or Netflix Soundwave. The colors and sculpting will be pleasing to those who wanted a more Generation 1 accurate cassette. There are a few accessories to customize him, and some articulation for posing and display. Negatives are the robot mode has some glaring hollow parts, both on the robot and with the accessories. The pile drivers don't actually do anything, there's no elbow articulation, and some of the joints feel a bit too stiff. You may again feel like you should have gotten more for the cost, unless you got him on sale. But in the end, Rumble Blue will look good on your shelf next to any War for Cybertron scale sound wave you happen to have. And I give Studio Series 1986 Core Blue Rumble 7 out of 10 deaths. If I'm Decepticon Tef, you happen to tumble. Look out, robot, cause here comes Rumble! If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. And you'll be left alone, oh baby, tell them all. And tell me I'm your own. <laughs>